All right, it's 11 o'clock. Welcome to uh, the latest in the Go Leads uh, Marketing Solutions, our lead uh, generation series, uh, sales lead generation series. Today's topic is uh, we're talking outsourcing and we're talking about uh, why your marketing strategy needs it. And with that in mind, let me get to the right place here. Let's get jumping in this. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover when this particular approach makes sense because one size does not fit all. Let's uh, give you five reasons why uh, outsourcing marketing works um, and we'll tie it, it's tied to the near future. And we'll also cover some practical tools you can use now, um, specifically assessing um, how to prioritize uh, the use of outsourcing and then um, a way, the way that we use for managing uh, vendors that we are, are outsourcing activities to. So, and then after that, we'll summarize and tie it all up. So before we start, um, let's see the little housekeeping pieces. If you wanna communicate with us, uh, Nui is going to be monitoring the chat room. So you can go to the chat function on your Zoom console and you can send us messages. So if there's anything that you want us to cover, or if you have any questions, go ahead and enter it there. There's also this Q&A, but uh, in doing, I think we're up to a dozen of these, in doing a dozen of these, nobody's actually used the Q&A. Well, I take that back. One guy, I think one guy used the, the Q&A, but most goes through the chat. Um, you can send it to the panelists and to the host, and uh, the message will come directly uh, to us, and then we can, um, we can answer that. So with that in mind, we can uh, jump in. This will take, it shouldn't take much more than uh, a half an hour to get through it. Um, and what we're gonna start with is this story in the news. I'm sure uh, that you've seen this, but it kind of highlights why we think outsourced marketing is the new marketing strategy. And uh, you've heard of this, federal government shutdown, unless you've been under a rock. And you may have heard inside there that uh, TSA, the uh, Transportation Security Administration, the people who check us in and out of the airport, um, they're being affected. So the people need to keep showing up to work, but their paycheck is uh, possibly deferred. So with that in mind, the quote that jumped out at me from these stories is one of these people, there's been these stories about the TSA people. Some of them were calling in sick as the shutdown was threatening their payday, as the Wall Street Journal says. But they said some of their friends who are also furloughed are filling in the income deck by delivering food for Uber Eats. So isn't it an interesting world where uh, our reliance on one particular way to uh, make money in the economy is is not there, right? So there's Uber, there's obviously Upwork. Uh, if you've used Upwork for out finding freelancers and outsource work, Fiverr, uh, Freelancer, um, there's Guru, there's gig grabbers, people per hour. The point is, is that these marketplaces and the internet has made it a lot easier for us to find um each other, right? So if somebody has a skill that we're after and they're clever, they can post it and then we can go find it or we can post our need and somebody can come find it. And through these, um, through these networks, we can take advantage of it. So uh, it may just be registering on, as easy as registering on Uber, right? Just, there's always, every time I log in, I think it says, do you wanna be a driver? Um, to finding gigs on Upwork, which is uh, maybe a little more involved. The, the, People are out there and we should be able to take advantage of them. That being said, when we say that we know this world exists, um, where do we place ourselves in it? So today's topic, we're gonna be talking about outsourcing marketing. When we talk to people about whether or not this is a good idea for them to, uh, like how much of the marketing function they should be surrendering or how much of the sales function they should be surrendering, that left side of the graph, one way to consider it is if, you're, if your business is best focused, um, if, if you're better when you're focusing on sales, one-to-one -one communication versus marketing, then this discussion is for you. However, like if you read down that left side, put yourself in the, uh, the buyer's position. If the buyer sees you as um, your company is being price oriented, there's not very many people in the decision process, it's a transactional, it can be described as a transactional call. It's a simple issue. Uh, generally, I, I say a simple issue. It's one issue. So it's relatively simple that, they're, that you're fixing or that uh, result that you're providing. If uh, it's a lower price, lower margin, then marketing is probably an emphasis, something that you should be emphasizing in-house. And so I would say that the rest of this discussion, while maybe is, is interesting, it's not uh, geared towards you versus 
if your focus is on the other side towards sales, this really is a discussion uh, that's for you. So um, with that in mind, let's just jump right in. These are the, uh, we're gonna jump into five, five reasons why. Turn to the right page here. And in these five reasons, I've labeled them here. I should have numbered them. Uh, don't have, don't need is number one. Have parts, not whole is number two. Your people are busy, number three. Someone in choking distance, number four. We'll talk about having somebody close enough to choke. And then uh, transparency. We'll kind of end with that. So with that in mind, let's jump into reason number one. Um, if you don't have a marketing staff and you don't need uh, marketing, uh, to focus on, then outsourcing is something that we think that you should be getting good at uh, going forward. And in, in mind, the first people I think of when I think of this, um, if we're on this side of the, if you fall on this side of the grid, is that you, it's attorneys, right? Engineers, architects, anybody in professional services. If you're referral driven um, and referrals drive 100% of your business and you think to yourself, I haven't really even needed marketing. I've kind of hung my shingle out and I work uh, that, on that particular, uh, I work well without any broadcast marketing or trying to gin up any interest. Manufacturers, uh, right, really good at building product. Wholesalers, really good at taking manufacturers products and starting to push them out. Um, if you have a high sales focus, then if you add that managing your out outsourcing skill and you can add that to uh, what you offer going forward, that is one of the main reasons for doing this because it lets you do things like, one of the issues that we bump into with people who uh, rely on referrals is, it's unpredictable business, right? So without adding any headcount, it's a way for you to build pipeline, um, to build your pipeline up for the times that you actually do need it. Um, or if you, especially if you are referral based, uh, upgrading your client base is, uh, sometimes tough to do because your referrals tend to know more people who look just like that. So um, uh, outsourcing the marketing function allows you to uh, maybe prospect inside of another client base while you focus on the core piece of your business. Um, and there's a, what ends up happening is that uh, marketing can help you get into places where uh, you have a little bit more power because there is power in distance. The closer you are to your market, um, the more people know about you, right? It's like going home over the holidays. When you go home over the holidays, you instantly become whoever you were, right? So my mom is ready to do my laundry. You know, I'm an old man. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I, I can take care of myself. But instantly when we go in there, we kind of form these old roles. Um, the more distance we have, the more people don't have a preconceived idea of who we are and what we do. There's power in that because we are able to build it up over time. So for those reasons, we say that uh, if you don't have marketing in-house, uh, getting good at the outsource, uh, outsourcing marketing is reason one uh, of the five reasons. Reason two is because uh, it's, it's a little bit different because we're saying you actually have the people. You have people and you have people with strong skills, strong marketing skills, but there's nobody on staff with uh, all of the skills. So when we think about that, it seems obvious, right? So uh, when you to have people who are really good at particular things, the more that they can focus on that. And then if they can add the skill of managing people who are good at the other pieces and do it on an outsource basis, so not doing it where you're sitting next to them every day, but being able to let a freelancer work um, along the lines that, uh, towards the outcomes that you are trying to push them towards, um, that works. So to do that, uh, you have to start with the vision of the future, right? You have to know where it is that the organization is going. And then there is a skills assessment that needs to happen at the time. So I use this parable. The reason I put the elephant up there, right, is because if you've heard the parable of the elephant and the blind and the, the, the blind scientists, it's that depending on where they bump into the elephant, that's what they think the elephant is, right? So the guy that touches the sharp tusk, he thinks it's a spear. The person who grabs the tail thinks it's a rope. In many ways, when you have marketing staff and they are really good at something, that is uh, the, the way they see it. They don't get the holistic view. So by outsourcing and by getting good at outsourcing in particular, not necessarily just adding outsourcing, but having a, uh, a strategy for using outsourcing, it's a way to get everybody to uh, get, the, get the bigger picture. So you will, uh, you'll, 
write your future organization, you list the skills you need, you fill in what you have currently, you'll be training for some, and then you'll be outsourcing others. So the key is to do the whole thing on purpose, uh, look deliberately versus just whenever somebody shows up with a particular skill saying, hey, is this something that we're looking for? So that's number two for the reasons why we think uh, marketing is the uh, new, uh, or outsourcing marketing is the new strategy going forward. Uh, number three on the list, you have uh, the skills, right? Your people, not only do you have people with all the skills, uh, but, but you have, uh, you, you cover them all. The other reason that you would be looking at uh, getting good at outsourcing is because you just need them to prioritize. You probably bumped into this graphic in some way, shape or form uh, over the years. And it's uh, simply like uh, measuring impact and priority. So if we think about where it is that we want our people to focus, if we have people that are skilled and they're extremely busy, we would love for them to prioritize, right? The things that are high priority, high impact. So if they're working in this world, this is the best place for our in-house people. The place where we can get more from our in-house people is if we can outsource some of these activities. So I think of like something that's high impact, but a low priority is really something like uh, prospecting. I was talking about the, uh, the the professional services people up front, you can use marketing to help you prospect because long term you'd like to get into a new market. But day by day, the biggest priority, the biggest impact stuff is the business that you can close today uh, versus the business that you can close in the future. So on the other end, right, is something, how about something with low impact but a high priority? I think of things like reporting, right? That's, uh, you may have people in-house that are good at that, but is that the thing that they should be focused on right now? Um, it's great long-term to have accurate uh, reports that you can rely on that um, are, are, are good for you. And it's a, a high priority, right? It's, especially if you're making decisions. However, it may not have immediate impact. It may not have great impact. So keeping your people focused on that immediate impact, uh, the high priority stuff, uh, today is another reason why if you teach them how to get good at managing outsourced marketing, um, you'll be able to get more business uh, that way, generate more leads. How about this? Reason number four is sometimes you need to yell at someone <laughs> because the office is the office, right? Um, every one of us works inside of, of organizations and inside of our organization, that organization has particular uh, things going on inside of it, which makes it hard. And especially if you think back to some of those uh, low priority, high impact, or uh, high impact, right? The, the, the things that I said that you should outsource in the previous, previous slide, when you look at some of those things, they can cause a lot of friction inside of your uh, organization. So I make jokes about it, but offices are, uh, can be like family, families, right? So outsourcing removes some of the pressure inside the organization allows you to place some of that pressure out on uh, people outside the organization. So um, again, to take that low priority, high impact tasks, having somebody outside to put the squeeze on makes life easy for everybody inside. Um, and right now it's easier going forward. It's just even going to be even easier uh, than ever to find people that are able to help from uh, freelance individuals to uh, entire organizations, to people who have designed software that can help, uh, handle some of these uh, particular tasks too. So that would be reason number four um, on here. And number five is finally, uh, sometimes you need the views of a person or an organization that isn't breathing your exhaust. So uh, that little graphic illustrates it pretty well, but uh, groupthink is real, right? And when it's easy um, to, uh, to get another opinion, like it is now, it's a lot easier to go source other opinions, uh, have people who are not content experts, but maybe have some process that they're good at that apply to other industries. You can take those and apply them and maybe turn yourself a little more purple in this example by getting the, the perspective of somebody who's not in there. So how you do this is you do exactly what I was just alluding to is you need to focus on content because nobody knows your business, your industry like you do. Um, so what you're mostly interested in is not necessarily their content of, of the other industries, but you are interested in the processes that they've put together uh, to help them. I, I put this as number five, but it may have the biggest impact going forward because the general feeling is, uh, especially around our office, is that uh, technology is really helping speed up these bubbles that we live in. 
um, as we keep getting uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, and they keep reinforcing the pieces of what it is that we already believe, right? You, you just cont you'll continue to get more of it. And then pretty soon you're not getting any outside perspective and everybody's kind of marching along the same way. That's a great opportunity. If your competitors have fallen into that trap for you to borrow from the outside and maybe put some, uh, a new spin on uh, how you do business, how you do marketing, how it impacts sales um, going on. Because again, this, uh, this little bubble, piece that's going on is uh, it's barely it's barely perceptible to the naked eye right so out, out forcing, outsourcing is a way of forcing us out if it's done right and it's really that if it's done right right it's one thing for you to say and i'm sure you might be thinking greg totally get it uh those are some reasons why we could use uh, outsourcing but um what is this if it's done right um and it's that last point i want to get into is how do we get the most from outsourcing, right? What is it that uh, people, that helps us get the most from these new networks that are cropping up, like Upwork uh, in particular? We use Upwork the most around here, so Upwork and Fiverr. And so how is it we do that? So first I'm gonna give you a little tool. So the next thing is we're gonna cover these two tools. And one is I'm gonna give you a tool of assessing how hard it will be to make outsourcing work. Um, and then the second is a process that we use. So we're gonna go a little more in depth into this uh, process visual that I've put up here. Um, and we're gonna talk about herding cats, which is the actual work of how is it that you get, once you've decided that yes, we're gonna do more with outsourcing, I'm gonna teach my people how to do it. Um, how is it that we get them to do a better job of uh, keeping those, <laughs> those free radicals out there, um, moving in the general direction that we want them to go. So let's jump into the first one, which is, um, the assessment, how to assess. Okay, so instead of, this is my friend, the, uh, those little graphics that you see there, actually, this is a, a nice little example. That graphic is not done by uh, myself. I have zero artistic talent. So I can scribble these things out and then I found a guy through Fiverr where I, uh, he turns these into cartoonish like graphics that I can use that are a lot easier for everybody to read. So. That would be an example, right? So that's a, 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 a good drawing has high impact, but it's not a very high priority for me to learn how to do that. So this would be an activity that I would learn how to outsource. So um, let's put these contrasting features to use here, and we're gonna score our company on um, each one of these. So if we run down underneath, right, the way the graphic works is, it, the, the focus is high on the left, right? Uh, it goes from low to high. And then as you move across, your focus is either gonna be more on marketing or more on sales. And if you remember from the beginning, what we were saying is this folk outsourcing marketing works best when it's your focus is sales, but it could work vice versa. We're just not covering um, anything that is outsourced sales wise today. So start by uh, doing this. The trick is if there is one, is you need to think from your customer's point of view to answer these questions. It's not you, it's not what you wish that you have or that you think we have internally. It's really what the customer has is perceiving out in the marketplace. So um, if we think like a customer like does, and the way that you do it is just start off each one of these questions. Like, does my customer think, like does my customer think that we are more price oriented or results oriented? Do they come to us because we uh, can give them a result at a low investment or do they really, they come to us strictly because they need the result, uh, even if the cost is a little bit, uh, is a little bit off. Um, sorry, I need to, give me two seconds here. I apologize. I don't know if you're just about to hear a dog burst is what was gonna happen there. Okay, so uh, as you're scoring yourself, the way you score it is you give yourself a score of one to 10. So on a score of one to 10, where do I fall along there? Not, you're, very rarely are people gonna score ones all the way down the left, but there's six questions. And in those six questions is, uh, you know, the lowest score you can get is six points. Um, and that would be, you're really, you know, probably a marketing driven organization and you need to get that skill uh, perfected in house. Um, think of uh, like 
Amazon is uh, fits over on that side, right? They're very price driven. There's uh, when people are making decisions, there's very few people in the decision process. It's usually just me. I can do everything. I only need one visit to get it done. I'm usually only after them for one issue. Um, I am focused on one. I think they can give me uh, low price. And I generally buy low price things through there. I'm not spending thousands of dollars on Amazon for a single transaction and they probably operate on lower margins, right? So they're, They've got a different focus than on the other side, let's say like a consultant uh, is you're hiring them because they're much more results oriented. Um, uh, the decision process may involve multiple people because the decision touches multiple parts of the company. Um, from a customer point of view, uh, we're going to have to do this over multiple calls because I'm not going to make any decisions like this today or the committee is not going to make any decisions like this right now. Um, there's since there's multiple issues, it's a little more complicated, um, right? So this gets labeled into complex sales. The investments tend to be larger, but the margins tend to be larger too. So uh, there's no right or wrong on either one of these, but if McKinsey's more on the right, Amazon's more on the left, they're both good businesses. They both do really well. Um, so you can score yourself. And the way to read those scores is if you're 40 to 60, uh, scoring more towards the sales side, it's there's probably not much question. I don't have... Uh, it's not, it shouldn't be hard to convince you, you need to uh, get good at outsourcing marketing functions to help the sales process. Uh, if you're under 20, you need to keep that marketing function in-house. And at, at the most, you're probably filling in gaps as you, uh, or you're investing more in training as you're trying to upgrade your in-house talent. Um, now, the middle is where things get interesting, right? Because if you're in the middle where a lot of people fall, it's nuanced. And so when we take a look at that mushy middle, you need to be able to make a case either way. So what I usually do is we'll take these six and we'll say, if you had to rank these from one to six, how would you rank them as to the importance to your business? Um, which ones of these stick out more than the other? And it's really the score of those higher ranked two, one or two items. That's your, that is your lean. Uh, that's, that should be the indicator as to whether or not it's um, you're building marketing skills in-house or if you're trying to outsource them going this. So after this, we're going to send it to you, but um, scoring yourself, scoring your organization is really the, the homework assignment um, to get started on there. And then when it comes to managing vendors, right, this is the, the, the bigger trick is it, it really is a trick to uh, get the most out of vendors. And usually what happens is I see people looking for skills first, right? We go out and we say, you know, I need a graphic artist or the skills come to you. A graphic artist comes and says, hey, uh, you know, do you need a, a logo redesign? And up until that moment, it was like, hi, oh, you know, that's, is that on our list? It might be on our list. You know, they they presented some interesting ideas. Maybe we should take a look at that. Um, those, that's not what we're talking about right here. Um, what we want to start with in order to use outsource marketing as a strategy is you need to start with outcomes first. What will the end look like, right? Begin with the end in mind. If you use uh, Mr. Covey's uh, attributed famous saying, and the way to do that is once we have those outcomes, like this is what it will look like at the end. This is what success would look like if we tripped over it. What Come up with three versions of that. One being the best possible outcome, which is generally pretty easy for us to come up with. Uh, this is what I think will happen if we had this skill or if we were doing uh, these, these tasks, uh, operating under these tactics. And then right below that is what's a workable outcome. I'm not happy with it, but at the same time, it's at least doing something and something's better than nothing. And this is where I think the, the real value comes from is drawing up before you get started, what is that minimum acceptable standard? What is the lowest part of the low? So the example I think of is like, uh, I've, I've worked in a lot of sales organizations and before you hire and fall in love with and get to know uh, your sales reps, uh, you know, kids and family and wife and, you know, all these connections that we make with people at work, even if they're not great at their jobs. Um, what is, before I even knew that person, what is my minimum acceptable standard? And your minimum acceptable standard, as I've talked to people about, it really is what is happening inside the company right now. So you can't say like, oh, the minimum acceptable is, they need to sell 10 new accounts a month. It's because the question right after that is, uh, is that 
that they need to sell 10? Do you have anybody selling less than 10 who's still on staff? And then they say, oh, uh, yeah, actually, uh, you know, half the people. Okay, so that's more of a workable outcome. We're not happy with it, but we're going to keep them. So the minimum acceptable is two. Like there's nobody on staff who's ever sold less than two. And so two becomes the minimum acceptable standard. So we know to cut the cord as quickly as possible. The reason we go through that exercise is because now we have our uh, the results that we're after, and then we can start working on what the pre-results are, that those leading indicators, and how is it that we can mark those out. And this is all before we put the job offering out on Upwork, right? Because once I kind of know, like, how will I know we're on track, especially when it comes to something like marketing? Because marketing, yeah, the, the outcome is I want increased sales or I want to break into a new market, but what are the leading indicators? Because these things may take, especially if you sell a high margin product, um, that with a long sales cycle and it's a complex sales cycle, it may take a year and a half, right? We uh, worked with a, a pharmaceutical uh, consultancy and theirs was upwards of three years is what the sales cycle was based on it, uh, how long it took for these drugs to go to market. So with that in mind, what are the leading indicators? And it would, you know, it's like names added to the list. It's uh, the types of uh, names that are added to the list are the leading indicators that we're at least moving the right direction. The best outcome is a new client, obviously, but we're outsourcing the marketing piece while we work on the people that we're working on um, on the front end, right? So inside of that, what are our internal measures that we're gonna be able to share? Those, are, those leading indicators are the things that we're gonna be able to share with our, 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 uh, our people. We're gonna be able to say, this is where we think um, it's the best possible indicator that we're doing great. Here's what is uh, livable. If we can at least do this, we'd be happy. And then if we're anywhere below this line, we need to kind of end this and, and reevaluate, maybe uh, do something different. So now that we've got a focus on just a few things and we've kind of, what we've really done is we've separated our needs from our wants because once we hand it off to the outsourcer, in general, they're going to do it their own way and how they see, how they best see fit to get to those leading indicators for us. And now that we've got this decision almost made, we manage our risk with budget, right? The, the easiest way to manage risk the, is, is not to outlay too much cash. When we think of <laughs> buying businesses, which we've done in the past, and if we've paid too much for the business is usually the biggest risk that we have. So the more, if we have no guarantees that the, the merger is going to work for us, the best we can do is we can try to pay the least for it, right? And it's, it's viable and it's a, it's a good standard and it's a good process to get used to because as long as we're patient with that whole process, because like anything else, uh, focusing on leading indicators um, it takes, it takes time to see results and you're kind of living on promise for a while. So, right. We want to learn as much as we can about how it is that they're doing things so that we can get smarter in case, right. The, the, bad thing is, or the good thing is they don't, they're not under your uh, major headcount. And so, right, if you can sever the contract whenever, uh, the bad news is they can do the exact same thing, right? If they get a better contract that comes along, you may find yourself pushed to the bottom of the table. So you do want to pay attention to how it is that they're doing things and have them share with you as much information as possible. Not that you're trying to outsource it or bring it in-house, but it is the next time I go to hire somebody, if you're gone, I need to be able to explain to them what it is that I'm looking for. Because the other thing that happens is that we outgrow them, uh, especially if it does work, you're gonna find it gets you through a plateau or gets you through a, a growth spurt up to the next plateau. And then at that plateau, everything needs to be done differently. Um, it's not like we'll enter these relationships forever, especially if you're a sales driven uh, organization. So that is a bunch of chatting the five reasons why outsource marketing is the new marketing strategy, we say it's because A, you don't need a full-time marketer on staff. B, your marketers, you uh, just need to fill in some gaps in their skill sets. Um, and it's not worth training them on because they're really good at whatever it else, what other things. And uh, we'd like for them to focus on that. Or we have a ton of people who are good at everything, but they're all just incredibly busy with great projects. And so how do we pick up those things that have fallen by the wayside? Um, or your office needs somebody else to take the risk so that you can point fingers. Um, <laughs> or you simply benefit from ideas outside your bubble. Those things are all reasons why it's 
good to get good at uh, managing uh, outsourced marketing functions um, in there. And so the two tools that we gave you is one is to assess a quick assessment for whether or not the discussion should be a, a heated discussion or whether it should be a no brainer. And then a little outline for how to manage and we can go deeper into um, all of that, of course, because uh, that's just what we do. Um, so it's a process. Um, and in the future, what it does is it helps you with lead generation, which is all that we've been talking about over these last 12 um, webinars. And if you've attended all 12 of them, you're, uh, you're, you're amazing. And if uh, you've picked them here and there as they've uh, appealed to you, um, if you did get in touch, if you did go through all of them, there is a theme that is uh, developing inside of all of them. And that's how we've built our own outsource function. So the takeaways that we've, uh, like to give you is are these right the human beings guide to business growth is a book an ebook that will give you and it gives you ideas on growth and talks about uh ways to get everybody on board so that you can at least if you're an organization under 250 employees it helps everybody kind of get on the same page the perfect growth formula is really designed for marketers and sales teams to talk to each other um, it just gives a framework so that everybody can communicate and stay on the same page because oftentimes those definitions are where everything falls apart. Plus, it does come up with its own assessment. And then Legion Compass, guess what? Uh, on top of uh, behind the scenes on all this is we are, that's what we've built is we've built a, our own little outsource solution because we can help with a lot of these tasks. We can't do everything, but we do a lot of things um, very well. And especially if you are focused on, um, if, if you're, focus is better on sales and you have uh, maybe a, a small marketing staff, augmenting us uh, gives you generally a, a different point of view and we'd love to tell you about it um, because we've been generating some nice results and uh, enough results that we, it's a going concern. We are, uh, we messed around with whether or not we should do it last year and now we're moving forward with it this year. So if you need to contact us, if you have questions, let's see. Sometimes I roll right through that, don't I, Nui? Nui always tells me, slow down. If you have questions, I'm not going to log off if, I, <laughs> if you have a question just yet. But if you have other questions, um, goleads.com. Uh, my name is Greg Chambers. I'm at, uh, I work with GoLeads. Uh, Lead Gen Compass is where I spend most of my time. Um, you can reach us at 402-334-1824 and uh, email us, info at goleads.com. And if you have any questions about outsourcing, you want to see like uh, in any of our, how we set up our Upwork contracts, I can walk you through uh, successes that we've had in, in Upwork as well as uh, challenges that we've had and uh, where some of these lessons have come from. Um, but anyway, if it's uh, marketing and sales related, you can contact us anytime and we'd love to talk. Um, hopefully this has uh, been less than a half hour. Nope, I meant 33 minutes. So thank you, I don't see any questions and uh, we will be in touch. You will be getting a survey in the next uh, bit. We're gonna talk about the next uh, group of webinars that we're gonna do and we're gonna get your input on that so that uh, we aren't flying blind on what to do. Have a good Friday and uh, a good weekend and happy new year. Thank you.